Welcome back, everybody. Today we're at round four of the 2021 CXC Championship. We're at Loretta Lynn's Ranch in Hurricane Bills, Tennessee. It's day one of the doubleheader weekend. This dude's got a nice little gangster walk going on. But we're going to jump straight into this one. Not going to waste any time with any introductions. Told you I'd get another one out here. I'm doing it. And I stalled it on the start. I actually had a really good jump off the line, but I stalled it immediately. So we're looking at the whole field get away from me now. That's all right. It's more fun to start in the back, you could say. JP Cruz is trying to come up the inside here. He also got a bad start, apparently. So I got Michael Brownlee in front of me in 40B class, getting around him, and then Jason Berenger in 30B. And then I believe that's Logan Hughes from four-stroke B class right in front of me as we go up the hill. Shout out to Reed Moot with some sideline footage there and a huge shout out to Robbie Walker who's racing double A class. He let me borrow his air filter cage because I forgot mine so I wouldn't have been racing without him. So thank you for that. Justin Daughtry on the Kawasaki there gets held up and we're able to make a couple passes here. Getting things cleaned up a little bit. We're heading off into the woods for some fun. Logan Hughes is flipping his arm around right there. I don't know what he was doing, or I didn't know what he was doing, but it looks like his camelback is completely falling off his left shoulder there. I've had that happen to me before, and it was quite a pain. And now you can see his actual uh, drinking hose is just flopping around as well. So he's having a pretty bad time with the camelback right there. He pulls over to get things fixed, I'm assuming. I got Brandon Doris in front of me here in the 30B class with me, riding the Husqvarna. So made some changes to the bike for this race. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit something in the view there on the handlebars. And uh, made some foot peg changes and uh, yeah, feeling pretty good on the bike for this one. This was... Um, like I said, first day of doubleheader weekend. This was a really awesome weekend overall. The property up there at Loretta Lens is amazing. Actually really uh, sad to hear uh, they lost one of their guys over there in that flooding. Absolutely insane. Uh, the footage I saw of the flooding there was, the whole place was underwater. I couldn't believe it. And um, it's, it would have been absolutely insane if, um, that had happened while everyone was there for the motocross amateur nationals which was uh, just a few weeks beforehand So you can hear some people hollering. We're getting into like a little freight train action here. Still got Brandon Doris in front of me. Got uh, Matt Wright in front of him, who is the points leader in the championship. I saw an opportunity here to make a little move. And Brandon gets stuck up with the guy from, I believe a row in front of us somewhere. So I got Matt Wright in front of me now. I didn't actually know that was him at the time. I knew that he was the, uh, that Matt Wright was the points leader, but I didn't know that that was him right there in front of me. <laughs> Getting by Sean Kemper from the 250B class. Thought I was gonna nail that tree. Not gonna lie, I got a little scared there for a second. Getting by Denim Sweezy here, 200, 250F B class. Not even sure what that class means. Probably said that before, still don't know. Doesn't make any sense. track was pretty dynamic had a lot of different areas we're coming into like a creek bed full of rocks here so there were several sections of the trail that were like this just basically creek bed rocks and stuff they were pretty cool pretty technical so coming up here i kind of second guessed myself and wanted to change lines at the last second got kicked by this uh root on my front end kind of swashed me out and uh went straight into that tree can't believe i didn't rip my radiator shroud off Justin Daughtry gets by me. He's yelling at me as he comes by. And the chase is on. <laughs> 
Haven't seen Justin out there racing in a while. And I think he was feeling it because uh, it seemed like he was getting some arm pump further on down the line in this thing. I was feeling good on the day, feeling like I could win this race. Feeling pumped up, good energy. Take a little hotline here. The last second effort wasn't really, uh, didn't pan out to anything. Coming down into another little creek bed section here. Some of these rocks in here were pretty big. You had to be somewhat careful not to, uh, hit a kicker and get washed out or something. I believe that's Nathan Vaughn there, also racing 30B class with us. So Justin gets by him and then uh, Nathan gets between us here. And there's some sort of Yamaha behind me. I'm not sure who it is. Kawasaki up there, Justin Kawasaki feels pretty, or sounds pretty mean. So I took a look back there, saw Yamaha behind me. Wasn't really sure who that was or where they came from, but Nathan Vaughn checked up for me to get by there. So I was feeling all right, like we were going forward. Justin's up there shaking his arms out, getting some arm pump. And he was starting to lay up a little bit, starting to slow down. And um, I just couldn't find a way by him here. As you can see, all my handlebars there, I got the XC gear, Mako 360 mount, put that on before this race, did a little testing with it, and uh, I think it definitely helps with the two-stroke, uh, with the vibration of the bike and just the hard impacts of braking bumps and stuff like that. It just kind of seems to take the shock out of the initial impact. Also got their foot pegs on, so that dampens a little bit of the vibration from the bike and stuff as well. Because, you know, these old school styles, two strokes have a, quite a bit of vibration to them. There's no balance shaft or anything in the engine. So Justin's up there doing the hokey pokey with his arms like he's going to cure his arm pump. See, this type of stuff right here, the, the Mako 360 mount seems to improve when you're going downhill and hitting all those rough bumps and stuff. This was a cool little uphill section, slightly uphill at least. Lots of rocks, got to be somewhat careful in there. So when we got down here into this uh, lowland area, I felt like Justin was maybe slowing down a little bit and I was feeling like I got to go ahead and get, find a way by because I, I felt my pace was quite a bit faster at this point. Cleaning things up, making time for, making uh, cleanliness for another run here at a pass. bit of roost here having to keep everything fresh 
Man, if you went off the side of that line, you can go right into that river, uh, riverbed, like that ditch. Tried to rev him out of the way, kind of intimidate him there. He didn't take it. He's looking back, shaking his head. I'm like, man, I gotta go. So I'm able to get around there. I don't know if he actually let me by or not, but coming up to this first hill section spot, pretty cool little hill section. Um, the rocks weren't too bad. The dirt was actually really grippy and it wasn't that steep. So coming back up here on uh, Matt Wright and then Josh Nichols, I believe from Nichols Farm right in front of him from the 40B class. But Matt Wright in front of me there is my main competition in this 30B class. And he is the points leader. Looked like they both did the same thing there. Coming to this downhill section leads down to the finish line, I believe. Heads up! Josh Nichols, Nichols giving me some space to get by, and we're coming through to the end of lap one here. A lot of spectators out there. It was an awesome weekend overall. So into lap one. I'm in fifth. Matt right in front of me is in fourth. Boom! Checked my chin on the handlebars right there. I kind of like scrubbed that jump kind of in the handlebar. Just the, the front wheel kind of knifed into the jump. This uh, hill climb here is pretty tough every every single lap. It's basically just uh, whoops the entire way up. The video doesn't do it justice, that's for sure. So I was feeling confident here to get by Matt. I uh, still, honestly, I didn't realize that he, you know, there's no sticker on the back of his helmet here. So I wasn't really sure who I was uh, racing against. I didn't have any idea. We're getting into some traffic jams here. I was able to just kind of sneak up the side there. Got Caleb heating in front of me in the 250B class. It was kind of an uneventful pass there, just kind of uh, snuck right up the side and starting to put on uh, the pressure, wanting to get up front. So moved up into, I guess, fourth now. Got Ethan Mize from the 251 Plus B Class getting by him there. I guess he's on a YZ450 FX or something. Not sure who that is in front of me. Already got his goggles off on the second lap. Almost went over the bars. There was a nasty whoop right there. This dude's just laid up in the middle of the track. Got Philip Wall in front of me in the 40A class. Getting into some traffic here. And Steven Bynum from the 50A class. Took me a good like 30 seconds to get by here. Skip ahead a little bit. Mm. 
Yeah, so I get by those two guys, and then I'm here behind Rex Russell in 45A class, and for some reason, he really did not want to let me by and move out of the way. And the thing is that it, it felt like I was going really slow. He definitely could have let me by right there. <laughs> Maybe I was a little pissed. <laughs> and then about five minutes later, I did this. So yeah, kind of washed the front end out there, lost it, went down. No one got by me though, got back going pretty quick. Come up to this hill climb. This dude's like waving for me to stop or go around. There's spikes everywhere. I counted it, I passed 17 bikes going up this hill. So remember, if you guys like these kind of videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, like the video, and subscribe to the channel so you can see what else I got coming. This dude's yelling back at me. I, I didn't hear what he said any lap that I came through. Into the second lap, I'm in second place. I'm 46 seconds behind Daniel Sortman. I'm gonna put on a charge, see if I can get up front. I think that's Richie Long from the Open Beginner class right in front of me. Okay, bikes move to the other side. Nobody's there anymore. So many rocks on these hills. There's Rodrigo Silva. Looking for another sabotage moment, perhaps. Coming around on round two of the hill climb. I ended up getting tucked to this inside line. Bill Ribeiro's coming down the hill. And uh, yeah, we got people scattered all over the place. I, I don't know why it was so difficult. Um, the dirt was actually really grippy. Rodrigo Silva's getting by me here. That YZ sounds pretty nasty. All right, into lap three, still in second place, and I'm 56 seconds back now. I think Rodrigo ended up pulling out. He had uh, some leg injury stuff he was dealing with, ended up having to have surgery for it, actually. So just under a minute out of first place. It's feeling good though. This dude's silencer has literally no packing. I went into a total two-wheel slide there. Oh, they're back at their bikes. Nice little roadblock going up the hill. Dude's got some streamer decorations going on. Andrew Clark getting by me here. He's the overall leader and ended up overalling the whole day. Took the win, but... I was able to come through in second place in my class, which is my best finish in CXC so far in B class, 47th overall. Uh, day two was even better, so I got that video coming out next. See ya!